It's nice to speak with you today, Raymond. Uh, I look forward to hearing your views on uh, combined distribution networks. Can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Okay. Well, I've been involved in logistics or supply chain management for about 20-odd years. Um, I started out my career as a 3PL or as a uh, freight provider. So I've worked for some local and multinational companies. Um, you may have heard of some of them, like Penalpina. I used to work for Penalpina in the 90s. And then um, after about five years as a service provider, I went to work as a shipper um, for one of our customers. So um, to work as a logistics manager for a confectionery company, um, a Swiss confectionery company. Um, and then after that, I moved on to a U.S. multinational, um, which is the largest distributor, and I think they still are today, largest distributor of um, network cabling and IT um, support systems. So um, I did that for a while, and then in, for the last decade until 2010, I was working as a consultant in supply chain management um, and also involved in academia as an educationist. I used to teach um, certificate up to master's level programs for people like the University of Wales, which is a UK university, um, the Australian Logistics Academy, the University of Wollongong, which is a um, Australian university based in New South Wales. Um, and for the last four, four and a half years, I've been working um, in trade compliance and logistics. I head up that function here in the Asia Pacific region for WR Grace, which is a specialty chemical company um, listed on the NYSE. Fairly old company, about 160 years old. Uh, we've got a presence in Asia, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, India, and of course, North and South America as well. Um, so that's roughly what I've done. I've worked as a shipper, um, service provider, consultant, educationist, um, in the span of 22, 22, 23 years, yeah. Thank you. Can you talk about uh, what are combined distribution networks? Okay. Well, the concept of CDNs or combined distribution networks is fairly easy to understand, yeah? Um, at a very high level, um, it is combining supply networks of different companies in the supply chain. Um, so the goal at the end of the day is increase efficiency and effectiveness, which is something that we all strive for in logistics. You know, um, so collaboration um, of yeah, collaboration or having a lead logistics provider of 4PL is something that's not very new. We've heard about it you know, since the time of Essentia launching it, that that concept with um, John Gatona in the 90s, okay? Um, combined distribution networks is considered nearly as an extension of collaboration, okay? So it's in collaboration, we work with our suppliers, suppliers and our customers' customers. This is real supply chain management, right? Uh, with combined distribution networks, we merge our supply chains or work with our competitors um, to achieve greater economies and efficiencies. So leveraging off volumes within a particular logistics pipeline, if you like. Thank you, and can you talk um, some more about why, why are combined distribution networks important? Well, the, the, the commercial driver for it is, of course, greater efficiency and effectiveness, which will then result in lower costs, okay? So um, lower costs, possibly to be passed on to the end user or the customer, uh, but very often just to make your supply chain or your, your distribution network more competitive and therefore giving uh, returning that value to your bottom line. So that's a commercial driver for it. Um, if you talk about from a social or corporate social responsibility perspective, um, having your trucks, for example, fully loaded instead of sending out a less than truck load shipment, that will help you reduce your carbon footprint. Um, reducing or eliminating backhaul. You know, you send a truck to a particular location with full and then you send an empty truck back. Um, that's not um, environmentally friendly. Um, so with a combined distribution network model, you have the opportunity to better, yeah, or optimize this, okay? 
So lower cost from a commercial perspective, uh, reducing your carbon footprint um, from a corporate social responsibility perspective. And I think also it is going to be the next evolution in supply, next evolutionary step in supply chain management. Um, you know, a few years ago when the, when the concept of RFID started getting or started becoming popular, um, that was like a buzzword. Everyone was talking about RFID, but the uptake, as we've seen, has not been that um, aggressive or not that successful, if you like, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. But something like CDNs, it's fairly easy to understand, fairly straightforward to implement if we can get rid of many of the soft um, issues related to it. And I think um, this and possibly 3D printing, which I'm sure you've heard of, um, are two of the biggest things that are going to happen in our industry the next three to five years. And who can benefit? Um, well, first off, shippers or end users, um, anyone. For example, if you have, say, a McDonald's, a Taco Bell, a Pizza Hut, and a KFC all located in the same shopping mall, um, all these four companies or outlets would have four different trucks servicing them. Um, in a combined distribution network, um, you could have all four competitors' products in the same truck um, delivering to that one mall. And so, you know, you reduce your your transport cost by 75% or 70%. That's just a very simple example. So the obvious um, beneficiary would be the shippers, um, people who ship products between point A, B, C, D, you know, um, and the next group would be end users because hopefully we'll, with those lower freight costs, some of those savings will be passed on to the consumer and therefore um, products that they want to buy off the shelves or out of a restaurant and outlet will not be as the, – the rate of increase for those products will not be as high as um, uh, otherwise. Well, the first one was the shippers. Second would be end users. Um Third, I think, is society in general. You know, um, there is a drive, also, although not so much lately, but there is still a very significant drive for us to be environmentally friendly, reducing our carbon footprint. So this combined distribution networks would, would benefit society. Um, and last but not least, I would say it would benefit transport providers, be it an ocean freight carrier, um, air freight provider, um, or road freight um, provider you know, through better fleet utilization and optimization. And how are the um, CDN's uh, combined distribution networks established? Well, um, I would say that normally with the most successful model, it would be through a third party. However, um, if you look on the Internet, you'll see that Hershey's and Ferrero, um, you know, I think they're two of the world's largest candy makers um, they announced in 2011 that they would work together, they would combine their logistics pipelines or their distribution networks to reduce their carbon footprint. And this was done in North America. So what they've done is they've launched a collaborative warehousing, transportation, and distribution um, network, which is a really um, good step towards uh, realizing the CDN dream, if you like. So Ferrero and Hershey's, and I'm sure you're familiar with both brands. Um, they'll reduce truck miles, carbon dioxide output and energy costs, and at the same time reduce freight costs as well. So they have not, however, combined manufacturing, selling, or marketing activities. So with a combined distribution network, you don't have to merge everything within your logistics pipeline or within your organization. You just merge the things that benefit, mutually benefit two or three or however many organizations are participating. So um, I guess I've digressed a bit um, from what I said initially. Normally this is done with a third party, um, but there have, this is one real life example uh, where it has been successful with two companies coming together. Okay. Um, now, why I think a third party needs to be involved is that very often the handicap or the the mindset with people when it comes to combined distribution networks is, you know, I can't put my products in the same warehouse as my competition. You know, they'll know who I buy from. 
or they'll know what raw materials are used or things like that. So what you need is a third party um, who's impartial, okay, um, and who has no vested interest in servicing or yeah, who has no vested interest in any organization who takes part in that CDN. Um, and we've seen that happen um, in 2012 or in fact 2011 as well. There's an organization called TriVisor, that's T-R-I-V-I-Z-O-R, and they're a spin-off of University of Antwerp. Um, and what they've um, become is they become the first company in the world that specializes in the creation and management of combined distribution networks, or what they call horizontal partnerships. Okay, so they act as impartial trustees, um, if you like, or impartial parties to bringing um, organizations together and combining their distribution networks to achieve all the things that we want to achieve in CDNs. So they've done that with um, UCB, which is a Belgian, um, is a Belgian healthcare company, and uh, Baxter Healthcare. Okay. So they use software, they manage the software, they look at the, the shipments that UCB and Baxter have, um, and do the route planning for them, and load optimization and delivery planning. Well, thank Is that you. Your question? Yes, thank you, Raymond, for sharing your views on uh, combined distribution networks. Okay.